What's up, nomads? Welcome to your new favorite travel podcast, Two Beers Till Takeoff, the podcast that delivers expert knowledge, the information you won't get in your guidebooks, and a story that's guaranteed to make you say, what the fuck, or your money back. B, you know our episodes are free, right? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Happy Hour. My name is Phil. I'm joined here with my guest today, Leo. Leo is a voice that you may not know that you recognize. Leo actually is the voice of Two Beers Still Take Off, our transitions. He's the man on the ground in Finland. And we actually studied together in Germany. So welcome to the show, dude. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Been a long time listening to the first time poster, you know? Can you maybe give us, uh, so for the people that are, or, or that know our transitions, can you maybe give us the, the, the famous taglines? <laughs> uh, what were they? Top five, <laughs> food and drink. You know, all those, the good ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. Those are classics. Definitely. People are going to be, uh, pretty pumped about that. But no, man. Yeah. So like. I've been recognized so many times on the streets. You know? Oh, really? Yeah, everyone comes like, oh man, you're the guy from 2 BS still take off. The transitions. Yeah, that's me. That's me. That's me. <laughs> and I always go very deep, like Batman voice comes up. <laughs> what's what's going on with you, man? I know that you're, uh, so we, like I said in the intro, you're, you, we studied together in Germany uh, in our undergrad, but now you're doing your yeah. master's. How's that going? Yeah, well, I just started like this week. So this is nice. like the first meal, like I'm back to being a freshman. I'm doing all the fun activities first week. So I've been drinking every single day this week. Like it's been like four days in a row and I'm, I'm pushing 30. So, well, I am 30. So <laughs> it's, it's been a few hard mornings. Like yeah. this week, we, like today, it was the first day we actually had like school, school stuff. And my autumn is going to be really fucking hard. Yeah. But yeah. coming from like working life since five years, I'm still like, everyone's complaining. It's going to be so hard. I'm going to be like, help oh, a breeze, a breeze. Uh, up to date, who, who parties harder? Is it the Germans or the Finnish? Oh, well, to be fair, I haven't really, I've been to one like student party. It was the first day and I don't think everyone went. It was just like my, what's it called? Like the group, like the business students. Okay. It was just for us. So I've heard like the sports people are very wild drinkers. I guess you drink if you like, uh, if you know it's bad, you drink as much. Right. The saying yeah. it finishes like the worst drinkers are the sports and the doctors because they know it's bad for you. <laughs> how, how do you say that in Finnish? Lääkärit ja liikuntatieteilijät on pahimpia alkoholisteja. Is that how you say it? I, I, I sorry, don't know it's, if it's, it's an actual saying. It's probably not the saying. <laughs> 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 but but so for, so Leo, I want to dive into a bit more of Finland because obviously you live there, and I guess a good transition to that is talking about education and yep. just some of the things that you're known for. You're known for having one of the best education systems in the world. You're known as having the happiest people in the world, uh, the cleanest air in the world. Eh. One that people may not know is having the most heavy metal bands per capita. Yeah. How does yeah. how does that work? Well, if I start going by the education stuff, like we put the heavy emphasis on like individual, like individual time to learn. So it's not about like, if you are slower to learn, the teachers adjust. And if you're faster to learn, the teachers adjust. And also all our teachers need to have at least a master's. Oh, wow. So it's like, you really need to want to do teaching to be able to be a teacher. And all of our homework is like not mandatory. Really? So of course they check your homework, but if you haven't done it, it's like a message to your parents, but that's it. Like they put more emphasis on learning instead of testing. Okay. Wow. Is so with, with having such high, you know, needing that your teachers have a master's degree, is it, is it like a. Is it happening in Finland that there's shortages of teachers? No, because it's like one of the most renowned professions here. 
Right. You like, guys pay, pay teachers the, what you, they actually should be paid. No. They need to be paid more, of course. Like, <laughs> the future of our country is in their hands, basically. They should be paid even more. But, like, considering how much, like, it is a master's degree and you get paid adequately, but they still, I don't think they get paid enough. But, like, it's just a sign of, like, um, if you say you're a teacher, everyone goes like, oh, like, actually, like, it's not a curse word. Everyone loves that you're a teacher. And it's Parents, like brag all, that their children are, are, uh, teachers. Oh, my, my, my son's a teacher actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it is a brag. Like even if, because it, even if you go to elementary school teachers, they also have to have a master's. If you go to kindergarten teachers, they have to have a master's. Wow. So it's, it starts early. That's, that's really interesting. In terms of the happiest country in the world, how, how do you very, feel? Are you, are you just very, super happy right yeah. now? What? Well, that's a very stereotypical saying, all the sad fins kill themselves. <laughs> but that, <laughs> it's a very popular saying whenever anyone mentions that, but like, I think we need to distinguish <laughs> happiness to quality of life. Like, okay. can you even, you can't measure happiness. You can measure quality of life. For us, there's basically no homelessness. Okay, really? every homeless guy, yeah, if you are homeless, the government will fund your house. It's not wow. going to be a good house. It's not going to be a good location, but you will have a house. Yeah. If you are down on your luck, the government helps. If, if you are doing good, then you spread the goodness. So we are basically happiness for our case is that we have a massively good quality of life. And I guess that kind of translates to another saying in Finnish. Can't complain. <laughs> and that's said how? So, Evo Valit. Evo Valit. Evo Valit. Evo Valit. Yeah. Close? Like, can't complain. Like, we are very, like, private people. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, wearing my, my how, I'm, I'm wearing my how to say it in Finnish shirt. So it's just a bunch of, uh, for people who can't see, it's just a bunch of uh, pictures of things and then just the Finnish equivalent Behind, so like Santa Claus is there, Julupuki. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Close enough. Yolo. <laughs> like a story about that show was me and Phil. We went to Croatia like what, four years ago, 2018, 2019. Yeah. And we made a deal that we we're gonna buy a shirt for each other. And I maybe I can say it now, but I kind of forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's from Helsinki Vanta Airport. Your shirt. <laughs> Oh, it was a fantastic shirt. So I thought that's, that's like, this actually fits you. So I just like, yeah, this was it. This was good. I, I had a few plans before that, but then I started yeah, to I wanted the a shirts. Car, car I, shirt. <laughs> I'll arrange, I'll arrange. Ne next time. But no, it's funny. Yeah. I was actually wearing this shirt the other day and I was at the, uh, a farmer's market. And then I just noticed that there was a lady that was working at a store and she was just staring at my chest and I was like, Oh shit. I'm wearing the shirt and she was just like reading yeah. them like, but no, it's, it's an interesting shirt for sure. So, so thanks for, for bringing that. Um, People another thing staring that staring at your chest now, <laughs> Hey, my eyes are so up rude. here. Yeah. <laughs> Casually farm with Margaret. Hey, up here, up here. <laughs> uh, so another thing that I know that Finland is known for is saunas. Uh, if mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm correct, is it that there's one sauna for every three people in Finland, something like that? Uh, the latest I heard, we have more saunas than cars. Oh shit. Like in every apartment building, like if it's older than uh, like 2010, they have a sauna, like communal sauna. And most, like a lot of apartments have saunas. Like my current one doesn't, my former one had the sauna. It was like a newer build. So in all the houses, there used to be a, co there's usually a communal sauna, but in the newer ones, you have a sauna by yourself. And nice. like every single cottage has one. If you have a cottage without a, like a, a summer house or cottage without the sauna, then it's not a real cottage. <laughs> it's, it's a house in the forest. It's not, the, it's not a cottage. And, and what type and of, of sauna is it? Is it dry sauna or wet sauna? It's a wet sauna, okay. I guess. I'm not, I'm sure about the difference. Uh, is it like steamy inside or can you see like normal? 
Yeah, you can see us only. It's not like a, like a Steam sauna is like a Turkish thing. But okay. we have like, um, you just have like a uh, fire pit, uh, yeah. like a, think of an old, like a furnace with stones on top and you throw water on the stones yeah. and that, that creates the steam and that makes it a bit wet. So I guess we have dry saunas, like mostly like apartment buildings have electricity heated, like furnaces with the old stoves and then like country houses and everything older, they usually have wood heated. So there's a fire under the stones and it goes. Like it, those are usually much more mellow, but these ones are might be a bit more like faster than electric saunas. Okay. And do you think that sa the, the, the number of saunas and cause I mean, we all, or I hope everybody knows that there's a lot of benefits to going to saunas. It's, I think it reduces your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Anyways, there's, there's good things for your skin. Do you think that that maybe contributes to why people are, or have such a good uh, like, or that they're happy. Yeah, but it's also, well, yes and no. Like, I think it has a lot of health benefits. That's why like Finland is one of the most long living Western countries. Like our ethnic minority that been Swedes are like, if we disregard, like averagely, they are the most longest living people. Like really. And, but that's. Someone people saying something about the community and like, it's a very tight knit community as such. And I don't know, I have some spin sweet blood, but I don't can, think I'm going to see it the next year. Can you explain the difference between Finn Finns and Sweet Finns or Finn Swedes? Finn Swedes are mostly coastal, like closer to Sweden. And they are like ethnically, like their grandparents are Swedish. So during, okay, history is in time field. <laughs> Back, uh, in, uh, earlier times, I can't remember the years. I'm is this going to be on the years. test? It is. It is. Okay. Make some notes. <laughs> so back, back in the days, we used to be under Swedish rule. And that's when like Finland was basically, we were called Earthland in Swedish, which means like Eastland. So we were okay. just like a part of Sweden. And, uh. In that time, we were like led from Stockholm and everything was like Stockholm based, like schools were Swedish. If you wanted to be anything in the world, in, in the country, you had to speak Swedish, you had to be Swedish. And, uh, like Sweden is a very big part of our culture, like our ethnicity, our history. And that's why Finland is a multilingual country. We are, are like, we have two official languages, Finnish and Swedish. Like Swedish is a very strong minority nowadays. Like. No one really speaks Swedish as much, except for the coastal regions. But, uh, yeah, so Swedish is like, Finn Swedes are still like from these smaller areas, like my old hometown Vasa, that that's very close. That's like very Swedish area. Then near Turku in the South, uh, Western Finland, it's, there's also very much Swedish areas, but that's also very, uh, like these are more of older terms. So nowadays it's much more mixed. Like okay. if you went to Vasa in the seventies, you probably couldn't hear any Finnish. Hmm. It was so Swedish area, but nowadays it's completely mixed. There are still some municipalities in Finland where you can't get anything done with Finnish. Really? Yeah. And, and just having gone to, so like I said, in the, in the beginning of the episode, that's Leo and I, we studied together and in Germany where we were studying, there was a lot of other Finnish yeah. students and there was some yeah. Finn Finns and then some Finn Swedes and yeah. behaviorally there was like noticeable differences. The yeah. Finn Finns seem to be very, uh, I don't want to say emotionless, but uh, a lot more like a closed, closed off. And then the Finn, yeah. uh, Swe uh, Finn Swedes would be like the complete opposite and they'd be like social yeah. butterflies. Like Emma, yeah. Emma's like a sweet Finn or Finn sweet. Yeah. Yeah, she is like, it's, they're very bubbly. Like Finns are like how, uh, well, I might be a bit biased here, but I feel like Finns are much more slower heating ones, but once they heat, you have a French for life. Mm. I think you are a very good example from that. Like we, uh, originally we didn't really chat that much, but immediately no. when we started, found out we both like the American football, we started like. Yeah. Having much more conversations and we even went to trips to Morocco and everywhere else <laughs> together. But yeah. like, there's a curve of to how much a Finn 
how, how quickly a fin like starts to warm up to you. But like fin suites don't have that curve. It's like they warm up immediately because they, yeah. fins have a hereditary distrust for other people. We don't like other people. <laughs> fin suites like, like, you know, the means where there's like a Finnish bus stop and there's like five meters between people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a, a, a set five meters between each person at the bus stop. Easily. They Easily. could all fit into the bus stop and probably be, you know, not be hit by the wind, but they decide to just separate from each other. So much personal space. So much personal space. <laughs> yeah, no, Finland's, Finland's an awesome place. I've never been. It is super interesting from what you guys have told me and what I've, I've kind of um, researched and stuff like that. But like eh. for people who are considering to go to Finland... What are some spots that you would recommend? Well, um, well, starting off, when you arrive to Finland, you're most probably arriving to Helsinki because that's the only international airport. Mm. Well, Helsinki is like, um, it's a very Nordic country, but it has like influences from like uh, Russian culture because we were also under Russian rule for a long time. So it's like, you can see pretty much our, a whole spectrum in Helsinki. But of course, people, if you think about Finland, you also think about Lapland and yes, think about like tundras with, uh, uh, with husky rides and with yeah. everything like that. Like a friend of mine is going to Lapland to be a husky driver, like husky. Well, it's not a driver. What is it even called? But he's going to go to Lapland Russia? to do that. Yeah, Masha. Yeah. He's going to go there for uh, the next winter to do that. Like it, it's a massive touristy, like if you go to Lapland during winter, it's very touristy. It yeah. can be very expensive, but it's very much worth it. If you see some Nordic lights during your stay there, like you probably have seen, you have probably seen Nordic lights in your life. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I used to live up like, north too. Same, uh, yeah. same longitude. Uh, yeah, yeah not interestingly enough, one of uh, the past guests that were was on uh, Lucy from uh, the UK or from England. Yeah, she's yeah. actually going to be working in Lapland too, so that's pretty oh, really cool. Yeah, so you might oh, see her because cool. I know Finland's pretty oh, uh, pretty small. I'll tell him to look out for her. <laughs> yeah, about like um, like Lapland is its own area, like uh, like Canadian North. That's much more wild. Finnish Lapland is kind of tamed, but you can still travel for hours with just seeing reindeers. And, um, well, then there's a lot of archipelagos, like right. near my home, like old home, there's a lot big, like UNESCO archipelago. It's, it's, um, this massive part of like, there's just islands. You don't even know if there's a sea behind that, if you're in a, like a lake or if it's a sea, because there's so many islands. The same with Turku and, uh, Orland. No, what's it? Is it Orland? I think it is. They oh, are no small idea. island between Finland and, uh, Sweden. If you can show it on the map, like if you go right from Stockholm. So here. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah, there's the small island. That's an autonomous area of Finland, but oh, that's really? apparently, yeah, apparently that's a very cool place to cycle around. So if you like that, you can go there, but the whole, there's so many variations. There's coastal, there's tundra, there's forest as far as you can see in this middle. If you go to like Eastern Finland, there's massive hills. You can see like kilometers away. So it's like, it depends on what you want. Nice. But if you're like a backpack traveler, you might want to skip the big cities. So it would be Helsinki, Tampere. I, I'd suggest Jyväskylä because it's a very studenty hub. I'm studying here now. And it's like a hub for massive amounts of students. So you, if you are younger or if you feel like you're younger, then there's always things to do here. Nice. And they're very alcoholic too. Yeah. I, I've yeah. heard the, the beer there is pretty expensive. Well, yeah, well, it's like, uh, 0.3 when it's somewhere around, if you want any good beer, it's like one, one euro, maybe two, two, one eight to two euros for a small bottle of beer. And in bars, it can be up to seven euros. Oof. Yeah. That's, yeah. I guess that's getting a little bit expensive, but still worth it to go yeah. see you, I guess. Yeah, that's why we were very big on Kalsarikani. 
it's much yeah. cheap. Yeah. You guys How's also that again? Have... Is when you get drunk home in your underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember you guys telling me. I think you told me once that was your favorite sport. <laughs> it's it's top five. Top five. So, top so five. For for people that <laughs> for people that are, are uh, maybe interested in going to festivals or something like that or, or cultural experiences that happen yeah. in Finland, what what I guess what are the activities and what time of the year would that, that yeah. happen? Most of our festivals are during summertime. Like it's uh, we have this massive like music festivals all around. Like there's a few different ones in Helsinki, some are from EDM, some are for indie music, some are for metal music, like Tuska is one of the like most famous Nordic, or I think it's even well known in European for the, it's like a massive metal festival. Um, and then we have smaller ones, uh, in Turku, in Tampere, in Seinäjoki, in Oulu. So there's a lot of different festivals, like few, but Coming back to your metal thingy, like a yeah. while ago, like a few weeks ago, I was in Turku seeing Slipknot in Northwest. Oh, nice. And at the same time, there were two different metal festivals going on. One in oh, Oulu shit. and one somewhere, I think near, near Tampere. That's and crazy. all of them had like big names. Like we had Slipknot and uh, Nightwish. And I think Oulu had like Opeth and other like big metal names. And even the smaller one had quite big names. So we, we really like our metal. Nice. Yeah. For, I mean, you guys are what, a, a country of what, like five, six million? Yeah. Uh, to have, I think it's 5.6 or something like that. Yeah. I mean, to have three metal festivals happening at the same time means yeah. that there's, there's quite a demand. Yeah. Yeah. But if you don't like it, if you want something more cultural, there's like, uh, in Lapland, in, uh, I think it's in Inari or somewhere like that, there's a film festival and that's like, um, uh, in the films, it's like basically our Sundance like or your, something like that. Can. Yeah. Yeah. So it's these like smaller films are played there and it's, I think it's also internationally round, but as a small town boy, I have to mention my hometown's claim to fame. You know what kick sledding is? No. Like it's, you have this, like, um, well, it's a very Finnish thing, but I think they use it everywhere. It's like, you have this kind of sled thing. You kick around to move on the eye, like move a snow. Is it we like have a, the, the equivalent of like a scooter? Sport. Yeah, kind of, kind of like scooter, also? but with like, um, blades on the bottom. Okay. And we have the world championships. Oh shit. Yeah. Have you, have you ever yes. done it? I, I never done the world championships, but I was in the Guinness world record. We tried to do the longest continuous kick sledding. Holy it shit. It was like and... 36 hours or something. And you did and it? It was like, like, it was like, we had a shift there. Like it was just one kick sled always going around taking shifts. And me and my friends took like from two or 3 AM to 6 AM. Oh, nice. Just to keep it going. I was so tired. There was always <laughs> someone watching the whole thing and it, it gets boring. Like it's a 300 meter course. You just go around and go around for an hour at a time. It was interesting to say at least. But you guys got the Guinness World Record. I think so. I think so. I haven't checked if we actually got it. <laughs> I hope so. Otherwise I mean, it's for, all in vain. I mean, kick sledding has to be on like the opening page, no? It should be up to be. <laughs> Who cares about the most hot dogs eaten? Or yeah. the most longest, like, Hail Mary's throw? It should be all about kick sledding. Yeah. Uh, so, so I want to talk. So, we talked about this, I guess, on the last, um, on the last, uh, episode of Happy Hour. But you guys, your, your prime minister has been in the, in the news recently about some drama yeah. happening for her partying. Uh. And, from what I've seen on the internet that people are like backlashing by like supporting her and like yeah. par posting videos of them partying as well, just to normalize her activities. It's just maybe what's the, what's going on in Finland. Let's, let's skip the media. Let's get rid of the middleman and let's get the real news of, of what's yeah. how Finland is dealing with this. I'm just confused how, why anyone gets offended by this. <laughs> she's, she's young. She's, she is 
let Finland through COVID. She's led us through the Ukrainian crisis or the war. And she's done so much and she just went out and someone decided to leak pictures. Let's say without even her in them, the worst ones. she was dancing in some TikTok videos or Instagram videos. Everyone keeps complaining there that like, lawmakers are old. Yeah. So why are you complaining about this? <laughs> it's her life. She's young. She, all the power to her. What is she like 36? Yeah. She's like a couple of years older than I am. Like this is the dream come true that someone like actually reasonable who gets to actually see what her laws make. Right. Is like in the leading like front seat. So just her passing. I don't know why people care about it. It just confuses me. And and for, I guess, a lot of the backlash, is it more from, does it seem it's more from the media than actually from the Finnish it is, people? It is. Like every single person I've talked to, the most usual fans is who gives a shit. <laughs> like, she can do what she wants. She wasn't like wasted, drunk in like a... Uh, a cabinet like, meeting uh, or something. <laughs> yeah, or in like a official meeting somewhere. She was on a free time. She was just like having fun with some other people. She didn't break any laws. She was having fun at home. She was drinking. We all drink. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the worst I've seen you feel too. <laughs> she like, wasn't even in her underwear. No. So why does anyone care? Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's stupid. And I guess we should, I guess we should practice what we preach and I guess stop talking about it. Uh, so yeah, I guess I moving know, on, yeah. I want to talk about, uh, maybe some of the history around Finland, because I remember when I met you or, or you and, you know, other Finns learning about Finland, I thought it was so yeah. interesting because I didn't know that your country was 105 years old. I just yeah. expected Finland was always there. Um, so before I talk about that, I want to talk about mandatory military service. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's other places in the world that re require it, you know, like South Korea, uh, Israel. So I assume yeah. you participated in the army. I did. I did. And, uh, and what's, what's yeah. that like? Well, uh, you do it after you finish your second degree. Like after high school, you go to like a gymnasium or vocational school. After that, every guy goes to military. You can, of course, if you have some illness or something, you don't have to go. Uh, but in general, everyone goes to there or does this civil service instead. Okay. But for, uh, like there's three different stages. There's like the six months, nine months or 12 months uh sets so if you're just like a bear like an infantry guy who's just like um uh like a basically a soldier or something that's six months if you are like a medic or something that's nine months and if you are a driver or an officer or nco then you do 12 months okay and basically what it is that you prepare for the event of something going on and it's never like, we, we do it with real guns and everything, but, uh, we just, it's basically your duty to your country that you just go do this. And in an event, if something happens, you're ready for it. It's not like it, it wouldn't be like anything that comes to pass right now. Of course, there's the current geopolitical alignment, what it is, but, but, uh, it's just like. Every single person in Finland knows that it's something, if push comes to shove, you know what you do. Right. So it's, it's essentially having a, a small, or I guess a large militia with all the guys in the country. Yeah. Everyone is draftable. Wow. Like in, um, I think in some shows I saw that we have the largest draftable population in the world. Like compared to their whole country, wow. I'm not, this might, I might be talking out of my ass. I'm not sure about that, <laughs> but like comparing like to a lot of other, like even no, none of the Nordic countries have, I don't know if Sweden brought it back, but they changed it into a professional army. 
but Finland is one of the few European countries, if not the only one who still has this mandatory Europe like a military service. And I, I myself did 12 months. Uh, I was, um, uh, officer nice. and, um, for me, it was like the first six months I was learning the ropes and the next six months I was just leading my own troop. Oh, wow. And granted, everyone is still fairly young. Usually the age is one that's 20. So everyone is still fairly young doing that. So, but it's not necessarily the most professional thing to be fair, but everyone knows what they're doing. If yeah. they don't, then the actual like army people do. Right. And so I guess the reasoning why Finland has to prepare for that is, uh, you know, like you mentioned that you, before you were under Swedish rule and, uh, I, like you said before too, that you're, you were under Russian rule. So, yeah. so can you maybe explain a bit of the history around how Finland became or became a sovereign country? Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, well, if we go back to like stone age or something, there, there is a ethnic Finnish, uh, like there's, uh, ethnic city, Fenno hungry, uh, Fenno, you rally people. And that's basically me and Finnish Finns. Uh, so we are our own group of people, like our genetic markers are very Finnish and we've been living in this area a lot. Like we have some people like there's Finns in Esto, like the same genetic group is in uh, Estonia and some parts of Karelia, some parts of Russia. Um, but Finland has always been more or less populated by Finns. And, um, uh, initially we were under Swedish rule. I don't know when it, no one probably knows when it actually started, but we have like, that was the status quo until like the 18th, 18th century. And then there was the big Nordic war between Sweden and Russia and Russia took us over. And then we were under Russian rule until 1917 when we gained our independence. Wow. And since then we've been teetering on between East and West. Because we have always had to keep a very good relation to the East, to Russia, to be, because it's a very large, uh, export import partner for Finland. Right. Yeah. And, but we never wanted to be part of the Soviet bloc because we are, we've always thought of ourselves neutral until like this year, we've right. always been very neutral about everything, but, but always more West leaning. Right. So, but. Uh, yeah, so we have had experiences under Swedish and, uh, Russian rule and been independent for yeah, 105. We had the big 100 on, in 2017. Nice. Must've been quite a party. It was, it was an amazing party. Like the, um, that was the massively fantastic year. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And now I guess you guys are also in the news or, or recently have been in the news that you're looking to join, uh, NATO. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know what the actual percentage is right now, but like we have applied and okay. there's been a lot of accepting, like every single NATO country has to accept us. Um, and we are still waiting for a few ones, but we are strongly on our way to NATO because currently neutrality is, uh, not enough. Right. And, and I know like that it's a, been... it's a, it's a scary potential, right? Because I know that Russia is completely against having a NATO country border them. Mm. Right? Yeah. We have a massively long line, uh, border with Russia and we have historically been able to fend them like during the second world war, winter war. Right. Uh, yeah. I read about that. Times. Yeah. Apparently you We've guys been have able like a bunch to... of like crazy snipers and like. Uh, like, yeah. like white snow suits. Yeah, we were like, our thing was we were able to ski, we were able to encircle, we were able to move silently in the snow. So that's with the memes of when the snow starts speaking Finnish. So we were, we, we had a lot, like it was, the Russians had an idea of something like a cuckoo bird. And they were like always scared when a cuckoo went because they were sure there's a Finnish sniper there. So in a tree somewhere. 
Yeah. Like, they don't go to trees. Those were the worst places to snipe from because <laughs> if you get to you near, there's no way to go. Yeah. But you're screwed. Yeah. 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 We have a long history with, uh, with, um, teasering the line, but we have had to show our, uh, claws in the survival fight right. as well. And interestingly enough, them. I think you guys also invented the Molotov cocktail, right? It is our invention. Molotov was the foreign minister of Russia, uh, Soviet Union back in, back in those days. Oh uh, shit. It was, a, they like, I, what was the saying? It was like, um, because they wrote the Molotov rip and drop plan, which basically divided the Eastern Europe to East and West. Like this part is for, for Germany during the second world war. And this part is for the Soviet Union and Finland was just on the Soviet Union side. And they were like, we needed to welcome Mr. Molotov to Finland with some flames. <laughs> That's one of the rare inventions. Like people tend to not know that Molotov cocktails are finished, but the same is with Nokia. Not many people know that Nokia is finished. Yeah. Isn't Ikea finished too? No, I'm kidding. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, Leo, that was Is awesome. Walmart Canadian. <laughs> listen, I was, I was going to bring hockey up, but I don't want us to fight. No, that, that, that's, yeah, that's a dangerous road to go down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Listen, this, this was very informative. I really appreciate you, uh, helping to, you know, inform the people about Finland because it's like, they've just heard it's an awesome place and you should absolutely consider it on your next vacation to go check it out whether that's in the winter to go check out Lapland, like you were saying, or a winter festival or a, a summer, uh, a metal festival. Eh, I what? mean, I'm just saying that like all of Finland during summer is like a uh, massive, like the same as probably with Canada, it's massively green, yes. but Finland has taken that even a step too, like further, like even the city centers are green and we are very proud of that. Is, isn't there midsummer parties too? Yeah, like midsummer is one of the biggest parts. Like the sun doesn't set during midsummer. Yeah. Then probably you saw in the northern parts of Canada, so it yeah. never gets dark. Yeah. And during midsummer, it's very customary to go to your cottage and get absolutely blacked out drunk. Maybe. <laughs> and in your sauna. Well, right? that's very usual. Yeah. Well, that kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, Leo, what do you say we uh, we do uh, we we draft a little top five? Yeah, I'm, I'm prepared for this. All right. So this episode's uh, draft is going to be the best comedies. So best comedy movies. So Leo, as the guest, you have first pick. Do you want me to say the quote or do you want me to say the movie? Listen, you can start with the movie title and jump into the quotes if you'd like. If you ain't first. Your laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn Talladega Nights. That's my absolute favorite. It's uh, French kiss. Chef's kiss. Yeah, listen, I, I can't I can't knock on that movie because I don't know if you knew this, but I used to have a friend in high school who worked at the movie theater and when you know they, they come out with like big cardboard like uh movie things so that you you could see yeah. what the movie is and anyways i got one of talladega nights so it was take a picture with uh ricky bobby and you could put your face in it and this thing oh. was so fucking big it took up like at least half of my room <laughs> and it stayed in my room for like six months and then i came back from university and I get into my room. I'm like, "What the hell? Where's my, th where's my, my Ricky Bobby thing?" My dad's like, it's "Oh, my I, Ricky Bobby, Ricky Bobby." My dad was like, "Oh, I needed some firewood, so uh, sorry." <laughs> yeah, I mean, understandable. My, it's like it's amazingly good movie uh, for a comedy. It just has that slight. It tingles me in the right spots. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a a, a really good one. I'm. I'm going to go with my first one here and I'm actually not going to go too far away from your, uh, 
your genre because I'm actually going to yeah. pick a movie that stars the same two main actors, Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. I'm going Step Brothers. Oh, oh, fuck! That was my second option. <laughs> Right, so Step Brothers, for those who haven't seen it, it's the story of an older couple who both have adult sons in their 40s, and then these two guys become Step Brothers. They're both living yeah. at home, and I mean, listen, the scenes in that movie are, are like, where do you even start to, to like, this, this, I, I said my last pick in, in the, the past episode, Las Vegas was a blue chip, Step Brothers is a blue chip. It's one of the best... Mm -hmm comedies universally i mean the bunk bed scene the scenes yeah. when they're getting jobs and they show up in tuxedos <laughs> like yeah. when they're sleepwalking and shit oh man like i'm gonna put my nutsack on your drum set <laughs> it's it, it, it is a pinnacle of comedy like right. it's it's the catalina fucking wine mixer of movies <laughs> right so number two I'm gonna have to go with a movie that stars actors like Steve Carell, Paul Rudd, Vince Vaughn, and a reoccurring guest, Will Ferrell. I'm going Anchorman, The Legend of oh, Ron Burgundy. Oh. That's also on my list. <laughs> That's good. That means I stole Break, two, but it's two, the grenade. two good ones. But no, listen, if you haven't seen this movie, it's a story of a, a news anchor in San Diego in the, what is it, like the 80s, 70s? Anyways, back yeah, in the day. Yeah, something like it dressed very like the 80s. Yeah, listen, quotes in this movie are, uh, I love lamp. Have you heard of that? I love yeah. lamp. <laughs> Sex yeah. Panther, 60% of the time, it works every time. Yeah, uh, it's. The fight scene is just something to behold. It gets so good. Like there's so many famous celebrities just like casually coming over and getting ready like Ben Stiller and all, like so many people just casually coming over to have a, just a fight. There's just so many la layers to that scene. It's, and I mean, they even continued into the Anchorman 2 where like they even yeah. had like a Canadian broadcast with like Jim Carrey, shout out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, oh. defi definitely a fucking good one. And my favorite quote, I think, in it is, or, or one of the best is, well, I could be wrong, but I believe that uh, diversity is an old, old wooden, sh wooden ship that was uh, <laughs> used during the Civil War era. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, what a movie. Uh, it's an amazing movie. I gotta admit, I, I'll give you that. Um, is it my turn? Yep. Um, I have a few different options for this one <laughs> because I just love the comedy, like I love a good British comedy. So yeah. the World's End trilogy as a whole is something I'm really keen on. Shaun of the Dead, yep. uh, Hot Fuzz and World's End. Yep. They are just like one of my favorite movies to watch every single time and um so i i'm really having a hard time choosing between those three so can i just say the trilogy no you gotta pick one man then it has to be hot fuzz hot fuzz i remember when i got it on dvd and everything so yeah that's uh simon Pegg was... that's in that yeah yeah simon Pegg, and the whole idea is that there's zombies and everything and the whole idea of the movie is that things started to go wrong and they just want to get to a pub. <laughs> Very British thing to do. It is, it is. And it's full of those like British anti-comedy stuff and everything. Yar. And then I, yeah, and then yep. I think you got a, a, another pick here. Black Dynamite. I've never seen that. You haven't? No, who's in that? I don't even know the actors' names. I just saw it for the first time, like this summer. I know Black it's Dynamite. like a cult classic. Well, it's it's like this. It it was made in like early two thousands, and it's like a um, very jokey movie about blacks, like where this. Uh, it's like um, the whole idea is that this guy wants to find his brother's killer, and uh, it goes very wild. It gets like 
the whole thing is involved, like the Chinese government, the US government, Ronald Reagan is involved in it. And it's just about some, the Chinese trying to figure out a drink so that black people have a tinier penis. <laughs> so it just gets so out of hand. Like I was just watching it for the first time. I was, I just got a text from my friend that it's on TV and I just immediately switched to it, started watching it and fuck it. It was one of the best comedy movies I've seen. In, um, I'm just looking online here on Rotten Tomatoes, it's 83%. And I mean, as a comedy, like that's, that's yeah. pretty good rating. And I had a, I have a quote, the worst thing about these pushers getting these children addicted, this new smack is that these children are orphans and orphans don't have parents. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very like the long winded explanatory and it's just like, it's massively funny to see it. I'm very bad at explaining it, but if you just ever get a chance, watch Black Dynamite. Hey, I guess I, I gotta follow up and I gotta, I gotta check this movie out and I'll follow up with you. You do, you need to. Right. So my number three, um, I gotta go with uh super bad. Right, yeah, so, I understand why. I understand yeah, why. Yeah. So it's, uh, I mean, Jonah Hill, Michael Sarah, Emma Stone, Seth Rogen, Bill mm -hmm. Hader, right? Uh, story, basically it's a story about a bunch of guys trying to get to a party. A bunch of young guys are trying to break into a party and bring all the booze. And I mean, mm -hmm. McLovin, yeah. and I mean, the line where uh, uh, Jonah Hill goes up to Emma Stone to get her some booze and he, she's like, you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. And he's like, funny thing about my back is it's located on my, my cock. <laughs> 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 and I mean, the best line in the movie, though, has to be, I kind of had this problem, something like 8% of kids do it, but for some reason, I would just sit around all day. Drawing pictures of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, how yeah, do you come up with that shit? You have to be high. You have like, to be so high. high on cocaine to write that. Yeah, and I mean, like, funny enough, it I, it, it was written by Seth Rogen, and apparently it was a story mm. loosely based around stories of his childhood, so maybe Seth Rogen did draw, draw dicks when he was too young, or when he was young. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um, so for me, number four, I'm going, um, uh, I think I'm going to go Wedding Crashers. I don't think I've seen it. You've never seen it? Oh, man. So it's, I, I've got to admit, it is a comedy, but it's a bit of a rom com -y comedy. Uh, yeah. it's star-studded though. I mean, Vince Vaughn, Owen Wilson, Rachel McAdams, Christopher Walken, Isla Fisher, which is uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's wife, and Will Ferrell also makes an appearance. Uh, it's it's basically a movie of these two guys that crash weddings to sleep with girls, and one of the guys eventually falls in love with a girl, and well, I don't want to spoil it since you haven't seen it, but I mean, it's it's just yeah, it's a classic. I might have seen it. It sounds very familiar, but I'm not sure. Uh, do you remember uh, Will Ferrell living with his mom and yelling, Ma, the meatloaf! Yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that's that's a, that's a classic one. And yeah, r really want to... Uh, it, it's just every time I it's on TV or if I see it, I always watch it and it never gets old. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's a golden classic. Bradley Cooper's in that too. Is? Yeah, he's the one who uh during the football game he likes tackles Vince Vaughn and like shoots him in That's the ass very when they went hunting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have seen it. Yeah, it's it's not a new one. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I've, seen, I've probably, I've, I've at least started to watch it a couple of times, and if I've started to watch it, I'm pretty sure I've finished it. Oh yeah. Okay, for my four, I have to go with um, Twenty One Jump Street. Nice. I just like it's pure comedy. Yeah. It just tickles my heart. Like my name is Jeff. <laughs> it's stupid but good. It just makes you laugh with it. 
Like yeah. the whole idea is that these guys are like cops and they have to infiltrate this gang. Was it in uh, high school or something? Yeah, in high yeah. school. And they've, it's just like Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill. Like they aren't young guys, but they just managed to do it. And it's just confusing, confusing time for the viewer, but it, they just make it work. And as for my five, I don't know. Do you know the movie Kung Fury? What, sorry? Kung Fury. Kung, Kung Fury. Um, uh, no. The, well, it's over the top, like a Kung Fu movie with just no heads or tails on it. It's like Netflix original, one of the few first movies they made. It has like, um, the theme song is by David Hasselhoff. Yeah. Hasselhoff. And it's just like the whole time you watch it, it's not very, it's not a very long movie, but the whole idea that he does Kung Fu and he has to travel in time to stop Hitler. We will because he was also a Kung Fu master. And like it, the whole movie is just like a very big spoof of an old, old Kung Fu movies, but it just works. Nice. Like it's a nice and easy comedy to watch. I'd give honorable mentions it now or after your final. Pick? No, you, you, you can go for it. Oh, no, let, let me finish just so that I guess I don't pick them or pick it. So my number yeah, five. Guys. So yeah, I'll, I'll maybe we'll have a, an honorable mention because I mean, how do you pick just five of the best movies? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go um, number five. I'm going Billy Madison. This is a, an older one. It's a. Uh, it's one of Adam Sandler's first movies, I think. Like his um, production company, Happy Madison, was based around Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison. So this movie is uh, with Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, Norm Macdonald. It's, listen, it's, it's, it's a classic. Basically what it is, is Adam Sandler's, he's become an adult, but he's just kind of like a loser. His dad's like super rich. So he's just kind of living under his dad's money and his dad owns this huge hotel chain. And his dad said, well, listen, since you know, you haven't done anything with your life, you didn't go to university. I can't in good faith, give you my hotel chain because I don't know if it's going to fail. So Billy to win his dad's trust decides to do all the grades from kindergarten all the way to high school to win the uh, to win the the rights to the hotel chain, so it's it's yeah, yeah. it's listen. It, I had to go with with a Homer pick. This one was one that I I've been watch. I, I remember my aunt had a movie store, and I'd go rent this movie. Like it was, it's one I, I've watched probably a thousand times, and it's just yeah, it's hilarious. That is that is that's yeah. a very if you cool. haven't seen it, you have to. Yeah. That's very true. In the same vein, uh, other Adam Sandler movies are also very good, like Happy Gilmore. Yeah. And I would give those a, a very strong honorable mention. Sure. Sure. Is that, is that your, uh, your, your decided, uh, honorable mention? I have to say scary movies. Okay. Yeah. They are I just mean... also, they are the OG like horror comedy trials and they just like they've dated so bad they're so not good anymore but nostalgia is a hell of a drug absolutely so for my honorable mentions i'm gonna go zoolander oh with uh, ben stiller and uh owen wilson and the other one that i i was choosing between and the reason i admitted it is because i guess we picked pretty much all the fucking Will Ferrell's movies, but it was, uh, old school. Oh was, yeah. 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 When they started fraternity, that one, man, that's, that's one of the best. But anyway, so listen guys, we want you to vote on who you think has the best top five plus honorable mentions. So for Leo, we have Talladega Nights, Hot Fuzz, Black Dynamite, 21 Jump Street, 
King Fury and his honorable mentions are Happy Gilmore and Scary Movie. My top five is Anchorman, Step Brothers, Superbad, Wedding Crashers, Billy Madison, and my honorable mentions are Zoolander and Old School. So, Leo, thank you very much for coming on. It was nice to see you, buddy. Yeah, I haven't seen pleasure. you in a while. Yeah, it's a pleasure being on. Yeah. And uh, listen, we'll, we'll catch you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Two Beers Till Takeoff. Do you want free additional content or just to stay connected with the show? Then give us a follow on our social media platform. That means TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of them. Are you in need of podcast production services, video editing, or anything in between? Then look no further than Strut Sound Productions, the official producer of the Two Beers Till Takeoff podcast. Music produced by Alex Gagne. Check out his work in our show notes. Voiceover done by Viking Leo Kiss. See you next week on Two Beers Till Takeoff.